Thank you, Brian, for doing this and joining me today. Of course. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. So uh, do you mind introducing yourself to those who don't know you? Sure, which is probably everybody who will be listening to this. <laughs> um, my name is Brian Ledoux. I'm just your, I guess, average Joe. I live in the Boston area um, in my 30s, just a average office working guy and um, like to be active, martial arts and lifting weights. Beautiful. So uh, before you found out about the book, what were you doing and what were your goals? So I was doing the traditional, um, more like strength training, quote unquote, um, route. I got into weightlifting um, when I was like 18, 19, right? When I got into college, you might call it university in Canada. Um, but I went to like an old school, like pumping iron, powerlifting gym, like bench squat, deadlift, um, everything like that. Like Those were the movements. It was the best. Yeah, and it, it really like helped form like a lot of like my personality and like who I am and just drive. But yeah, that's where I started out. Like all those movements. That's what I really did for a long time. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel when you were doing those movements? I mean, great. I mean, you don't, you, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So right. Um, it's great. Cause obviously the pursuit initially was, Oh, I want to build muscle and get strength. And I think what most people do is if they're not really going into working out to be good at powerlifting, they're going mm -hmm. into it to build muscle and have a certain, it, it, at the end of the day, it's almost like an aesthetic pursuit, but right. you get into more weight is better what I want. You know, I yes. want to get more muscle. That's what that is. So I felt great because I was hitting PRs, hitting numbers. And I'm not a big guy. I'm like six feet, 190 pounds, but I was a much smaller guy, very skinny, very um, ectomorph, as you might call it. So I was mm -hmm. feeling great. Um, I was for a long time until I wasn't, I guess, as most people's experience mm -hmm. so your goal at that time was to put on muscle and look good muscle and just lift more muscle lift more weight be able to pull more off the floor squat more bench more um because i equated those numbers going up to strength equaled muscle size and all that kind of stuff but those those key major movements everybody's taught to do and that are the best you got to stick to the basics and that's all you got to do right, right, so, right. So, you're so you're told yes so um, things were working for you at that time? Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, relatively, right? I mean, I went from the same height in 150, 55, 60 pounds on 18 until I was 30. I was, you know, almost 200 pounds. Now, obviously, all that's not muscle, um, but, you know, um, but put a lot of muscle on and people noticed and I'm um, just an average guy. You know, I don't compete in anything. I'm just average working guy who likes to work out but yeah it was great i thought it was great i thought it was i was lifting a lot of weight for my size and whatever it was it was awesome um until i kind of found things that are more efficient just better for what i wanted to do so exactly so what made you look for something else or another program yeah in, uh, good question um I was speaking with my friend, uh, Rob, who you might know. Um, he took the course, he certified. Um, we actually became right. connected. He lives in, in England. So we just became connected from um, like a, another um, Facebook page um, talking about like old school lifting techniques and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we were always talking about that and became good friends. And he kind of turned me on to, to Doug. This is back in, I think, 2016. So a little while yeah. ago. Right. Um, and I had initially seen Doug, a video of Doug did like years ago, when? Um, 2014, 2015, maybe before that on dips, not being good for chest and triceps. And I watched it and I was like, this, where is this guy getting this information from? This can't be true. But my reaction looking back on it was this can't be right because it's not because of any, anything he said was illogical or didn't make sense. It's because first of all, I didn't really understand what he was saying and <laughs> Um, it was more of an emotional response. We're like, I've never heard this before. This can't be true because this is against like the paradigm. So like, no way. Um, that then, means that means what you were doing was wrong. Yeah, but I mean, when you're told something for so long, and every article you read, every form you go on, it's this prescriptive right. modality. If something's saying something different, like this guy must be out of his rocker. But it wasn't yeah. until I, Rob introduced me to it. I looked into the, the literature, bought the book, the PDF back then. It was called The Physics of, I'm sorry, yeah, The Physics of Resistance. No, what was it called? The, the Physics, Physics of Fitness. Physics of Fitness. Um, 
and I really looked into it because I'm a very objective person, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in, say, I'm, I'm a recruiter by trade, sales type um, role. So I'm very into um, what you put in, you get out based on predictive data and um, focus and investments, Numbers. all that kind of stuff. So it made real, real sense to me, just an objective pathway to get on. Right. So uh, Rob introduced you to Doug, and that's how you bought the book. Yep. How long did it take you to start implementing what's in the book? Immediately. Um, pretty much, I mean, I, read, I got through most of the book in like a weekend, um, read through it. Like I skimmed some, I, I mean, not the whole entire thing. I like skimmed uh, certain parts. And I went back and read other things. I just got the workout done and would talk to Rob and like, hey, give me some of the cliff notes on it while I'm reading the rest of the book. Um, but it was just like an all or nothing. Like I've been doing, at that point, I was doing mainly squats for legs and weighted calisthenics so like weighted dips weighted push-ups resistance band push-ups um which was doing i thought was doing a lot of good work i was up in weight but i shut all that and i was like i'm just gonna do an experiment i'm gonna do what this guy's saying based on this biomechanic stuff he's talking about and just see what happens if anything i'll learn something so immediately i, I implemented it changed my entire routine so uh when you uh, started implementing these exercises, how long did it take you to start seeing the difference? Um, I think almost immediately, not like I looked in the mirror the next day and I was like, wow, I have 3D delts, not anything like that. But I think as I was doing it, I'll always use like a cable side raise or a dumbbell side raise as an example. You're doing overhead press and standing dumbbell side raise, all that stuff. And you're like, okay, great. But it's not until you actually do a, when I was doing movements that actually hit the muscle correctly, I was like, wow, not, not like being sore is an necessarily an indicator of progress, but right. you haven't done something before. And I was like, my side delt has never been sore before. And I'm loading it correctly. And it just made sense. It was almost immediately, especially with like legs too. Um, I did uh, cable squats as Doug prescribed back then. I did those. And that was just like, a total game changer. And then after the a couple months, three months, I would just see the difference in the mirror overall. So it was pretty quick as far as like progress goes. Did you uh, buy other programs or books about working out prior to buying the physics of fitness? Um, yes, I used to buy a lot of them, not necessarily to like learn new things, but just to kind of uh, be, I could buy, buy like Tom Platts had a book in like the early eighties about like professional. Cause I just am like a fan of the physical culture. So I would just buy it, but we try to borrow from those people from way back in the day, um, realizing that things that they were supplementing with obviously aided in some of their results, but just different modalities and different understandings of reps and certain rep schemes. But the first one I actually um, from scratch integrated into my training was um, Doug's book. So what did strike you the most when you start, started le- uh, reading the book as compared to what you read before or you watched? Yeah, um, it was just the objective nature and approach. It's just like an objective approach to actually training um, where a lot of it is in our world today, like anything, like if you're, it's facts and data and then you do it deci- and then you make a decision like if you're going to bake a, a cake right you have this much flour this much this much eggs this much sugar because you know that's what it takes to bake a, a cake whatever or a loaf of bread but when it comes to working out it's well this sometimes work and i feel this connection here and you got to confuse this it's very jumbled up everybody has their own opinion when i read doug's book it's not doug espousing these theories that he has and he's trying it out it's look at any physics book look at any engineering book this is objectively what you have to do based on these metrics to evaluate an exercise's effectiveness. And this is why. So it was just like, it was, it's almost easier to evaluate, but it also takes a little more brain power to like take some time out. So it was more of like a systematic objective scientific approach to effective training, which was way different than things I've experienced before. Do you feel the book is complete in terms of uh, how you should work out and which exercises you should use? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like to say that there's a one size fits all model for everybody is short sighted. Um, but I think depending, I know, I think you, you're, um, you're an athletic trainer, I believe by trade, right? Unless I'm, so I think there's certain things that maybe for training for certain, like if you're a power lifter, 
like obviously you want to train power lifts skill um, movements and yeah special certain skill movements yeah like but i think if your goal is to build the most amount of muscle possible in the most efficient way possible in the safest way possible that's what you should be doing and i know it sounds like a sales pitch because it does it sounds like you're trying to indoctrinate somebody but it's applying objective scientific principles to the pursuit of weightlifting in a industry that's very much about emotions and feelings and almost like a religion which i think there's no time for especially if your time is precious which everybody's is right did you feel that the book was kind of salesy like trying to sell you something or a program no not a, i i didn't see that at all um if anything it's almost like weeding out people initially who don't want who are, aren't open to things so it's almost like anti-salesy if you're like if you see a video and it's like incline bench does not work their upper chest you're like i'm not even gonna if you're a certain kind of person you're like uh, this doesn't matter no I'm, i'm not gonna listen to this um so it's almost like weeding out people who i mean aren't open at the time but i think hopefully with conversations like this and the expansion of the youtube channel will open things up but no it's very black and white this is what's going on read this this is the you can test test it out for yourself and see ask the i mean go look it was very objective and very kind of plain as day it wasn't over promising or over salesy do you feel that you will be using what what's in the book in the next years oh, of course yeah i mean i think not to sound like uh the pe- like the not to sound like um um like over hyped about it but once you go into it and you learn the kind of quote unquote truth which sounds kind of fantastical but once you learn like the objective facts about what it is it's almost hard to like go back to something else because if you know like if i can train the, the pectorals ideally this way and you're doing something else it's all about a trade off right like oh i might like doing dips or bench press but i know that i know objectively this is not the optimal way to do it So yeah you can I can change it up and do something else but I just know in the back of my mind like I'm not being as efficient as I possibly could be. So yeah. no I mean I I don't see myself changing at all because it's in line with what I want to do long term for my fitness goals. So you so you mean that the information in the book is timeless. Yeah um I I would say so I mean again like I think people would hear this and say well how is this different than like what I read by this person this person it's like Well I mean it's Doug and yourself are saying this stuff and we're not only people actually kind of bringing this to the forefront but if you look at it, it's not like it's your opinion and your ideas it's you're just kind of bringing to light these objective principles that are applicable to anything in life any lever any angle anything like that so I would say in that case it's timeless if you would consider physics timeless like of course like right. yeah unless the body structure the joints the human body changes. Yes, there are always that caveat if it becomes like an X-Men movie and people start to <laughs> death and stuff like that. Then That's we'll have to right. change it a little bit. But yeah, no, it's it's objective physics and biomechanics. So it's a, a good way to evaluate what you're doing and kind of create a, a program around that. Would you recommend this uh, training for your kids or for someone later on? of course i do when pe- when a lot of people ask me um whether it be when I mean, pre covid during like jiu jitsu class or anything like that like tell me not like i'm a you know i'm a adonis here but you know i'm in relatively good shape for my age and um people ask me i tell them this is the book to buy i know what you're going to sound like i'm selling you something this is the book to buy this is why and i'll tell anybody who asks me um and often times that's that's met with tell me more or tell me where i can look at this and i'll send youtube videos and sometimes it's okay well that makes sense but i'm fine doing this i'm like well don't ask don't ask me then <laughs> so, right right well um is there anything you want to say that we didn't talk about no i mean i appreciate you taking the time i mean i'm always to, anything i can do to give back to i guess this little growing community of people who are um kind of bettering themselves professionally and like physically I guess with with these pursuits um, I'm happy to do uh, any questions for me I mean I'm I'm glad to help out and um give my experience if it helps someone uh, someone who's interested in kind of 
um, up leveling them, themselves. I ho hope they see this and see him just an average guy who works an office job and likes to lift weights and it's worked for him. So, yeah, last question that I have for you, since you, let's say you have uh, a limited time, uh, you, you're a busy man and working out. Do you find that doing these exercises give you the most with the least amount of effort and wasted time? Oh, of course. Like today, like I was, I have a garage gym. I'm blessed to have stuff at home. And I did table sissy squats and I did super set that with seated leg curls and calf raises. And that's, I was done. Like I just kept doing it intensely and did it and got it done in less than an hour. And I'm not doing barbell squats with wide stance, then short stance, then leg press. Then it's, it saves so much more time, so much more time. And it's just as it's more, more efficient. So yeah, it might, and especially someone who's in other things, like I'm into martial arts. Right. Um, I, if I did heavy compound lifts three or four times a week and then did jujitsu intensely, it's like, I'm trying to recover from two different sports. Yeah. My nervous system will be, will be fried, you know, um, in certain ways. So no, I'm much more efficient and much more um, kind of dialed in what I want to do in other parts of my life as well. Do you feel that it made you heavier when you're doing your martial arts? Like sometimes people say that you could become muscle bound when you do compound lifts or whatever. Um, no, I mean, I mean, well, I didn't do compound. I wasn't really in the jiu-jitsu. I've been doing jiu-jitsu quite intensely for a while, but I was doing mostly Doug stuff for a while. But no, mm -hmm. I mean, compound lifts, I mean, I don't know. I've always, I was always pretty strong because I always trained Right. In concert with it, but recovery was always an issue. But doing like mm. the biomechanic movements, I mean, I'm, I don't feel like if I did, I couldn't do a heavy squat workout, uh, doing a lot of deadlifts and then go roll for two hours. Like I couldn't personally, um, I would just be fried. Um, whereas the stuff I'm doing now, if I work out in the morning, super hard workout by the afternoon or evening for training, I'm, I'm good to go. Fantastic. That doesn't limit your options. No. And no, I mean, I mean, I've gotten stronger. I mean, that's a relative term, right? Like yeah. if you put, yeah, but I've gotten stronger all around. It's just been, it's been a great experience. I will continue to do it for as long as I can. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brian, for your time and for your feedback. Of course, we're going to be, uh, we're going to stay connected by our private Facebook group. We're yeah. happy to have you there. Of course, Mo, it was a uh, pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much. Take care.